Okay guys, welcome back. Another spin today. I've uh, got a bit of a shadow there, haven't I? That's from the plastic dog bath. I wonder what'll happen if I turn my overhead light and my... Uh, it's a bit dark, isn't it? I'll just go with that. It's just causing a bit of a shadow because there's a light there. So when it comes over the side of the plastic, it's making that shadow a bit. Anyway, um, I think it's better than no light on at all. Today, I was going to do blues and greens, but I'm going to try just a different color combination. One that hopefully will work really well. Browns and turquoise. So, these are my colors. That's them there. Uh, dark brown, turquoise, mid brown, and then a light brown. So I'll show you what those colors are. They're all the Joe Sonias. Uh, we have this one is burnt umber, burnt sienna, and skin tone. And then the turquoise is this one. Well, it's called aqua. So Joe Sonias. So you can buy them in the bottles. They're about eighteen dollars in Australia. And these are about $8, but these are much better value because there's 250 mils in here and 75 mils in there. So one of these only really does me a, a few pours, but you can't get all the colors in the big bottles. And then my cell activator is the Amsterdam Titanic, Titanic, <laughs> I always want to say Titanic, love the movie, <laughs> Titanium White. And I've mixed this three parts low troll to one part of the white and I'll just put it in there. I'll give, actually I'll give them all a bit of a, a shake shake shake. Um, got my little puppy pedal pad down to catch some of the paint anyway, not all of it, it'll fling out. Now what or I think I'm gonna do um I think I'm gonna do puddles it's a big surface so I'll do puddles and then I'll kind of do little dots as well so that one's what's well, very full so it's not shaking I made up these last night all right I'll put all my colors there and then I'll work out what order I want to do them but as I said I'll probably just do blobs lots of little blobs and I've got my hair dryer this one's got cold that's um and then it's that's the the speed so, well, cold and warm and then low and high. But I'm going to have cold and low. And I've just got my, um, actually, I should take that on. It's just sitting on there. It's just uh, medicine cups with the bottom cut out. But I think I better tape it just in case I'm blowing and that falls off. Can you imagine if that fell off? <laughs> oh, bear with me. Let me get a piece of tape. I wouldn't want it falling into my art, would I? That would not be very good at all. I'll just grab a piece of masking tape and just just attach that so that it won't fall off. Okay, there we go. So that's ready. Um, I've got my gloves on. I've told you about my pouring medium in other videos, so I don't need to go. I'll just show you my bottle real quick. <clears throat> But um, like I've been through it heaps of times, so I don't need to go through it all again. And I won't shake this up because it gets bubbles in it. That's just the um, interior wall paint in white. So let's get started. This is really handy. I mean, you can pour your paint into a big squeeze bottle. And I do have them in a big squeeze bottle, but they're all empty at the moment. So I need to refill my squeeze bottles. All right, so not too much paint this time. That should do, hopefully. Should do. When I'm doing a, a little tile, like an eight inch tile, I go like an inch from the sides. So it's bigger, so I've probably got two inches from the sides now. And the other thing you need to be aware of, um, when you are, it's always a hair. I don't know where they come from. 
and bubble. Um, when you are pouring out your paint puddle and you think, oh, how much paint do I need? Try and work it in thirds. So if you've got, if your puddle's about that, it should be equal amounts to the end of your puddle to the end of the canvas. A third, a third, a third. Don't go a little tiny puddle like this. You need to have it a third, a third, a third, okay? Even more if you can get away with it because the more paint you have um, in the middle, the easier it's going to be to, to spread out. Okay, got that? Clear as mud? Let's do this. Now, I only made this one up this morning. It's a bit bubbly. Look at that. Now, the other thing you need to be aware of is your paint consistency. If your paint is too thin when you blow it, it's, uh, it's going to blend too much and it's going to get quite muddy. Whoops, this one's a bit thinner than that one. This is probably better how I like it. I'm going to put some more brown in the middle. So, yeah, if your paint's too thin, um, then you've got the problem of um, it blending too much. If it's too thick, when you blow, it's not going to go anywhere. It's just going to kind of sit there. So, yeah, you've got to be careful. It's just practice. I like mine to have a little mound. So this is what I'm saying about my little blobs. Put them everywhere around the place. Just so that you're not getting every side of the canvas exactly the same. You know, they can be different. They don't all have to be exactly the same. Oops, I forgot to put my skin tone one down it's only on the bottom I'll put him over here a little bit I'm trying to get you know a decent amount of paint on here Whoa, <laughs> that one comes out fast. Um, what else, what else, what else? A little bit of the turquoise there. I'm not quite sure how strong this dark brown's gonna be, like if it's gonna overtake everything or not. Not quite sure how it's gonna go. All right, I think that's about it let's just center that again I always seem to want to go off down there now the other thing that I was thinking about um, is you know when you blow your bloom out and you've got some rainbow colors on the sides that haven't got any lacing on and you think oh what can I do with those before you start spinning, I think it's a good idea to blow those out. Otherwise, you tend to get them on the corners, you know those stripes? So what I'm going to do is if I get any of those, I'm going to blow them with my little barbecue flat fan. I don't want to do it with the hairdryer because then I might disrupt my lacing. Um, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to try. I haven't done that before, but I'm going to try with my little blower and see if I can blow those edges out. All right, so this is the thinner mix, the three to one. Last time I did my big bloom, um, I did a two to one, and I ended up with quite a lot of white in the middle that I couldn't move around. I'm gonna put on lots of white this time because I haven't been able to blow it far enough. So with my white being thinner, I hope and more, hopefully I can blow it right to the edges. I hope, I don't know, like it's, it's tricky. I'm gonna put a little bit of turquoise just on half of that. 
so that I'll have sort of half blue, half brown. Otherwise, the middle is exactly the same. All right, here we go. Oops, that came out really fast. I wasn't planning on putting that much on, oh my gosh. All right, it's done now, let's blow. All right, cold, low. Okay, now I'm going to use my little blower to get some of the areas where I don't want to disrupt my lacing with a big hair dryer, but I still want to get some white coverage. So this is where I use my little guy. So he does a beautiful job. I'm going to leave the white because it will get some cells in it. I'll turn that off while I'm talking. It will get, hopefully, well, it will. And if it doesn't, that's okay. You know, a little bit of white is fine. Now, this is what I was saying to you about these rainbow colours here. So I'm going to try and blow those out, just so that I don't have those um, block colours, okay? We'll see how it goes. Beautiful, beautiful, and I've even got some lacing there. That's a tiny bit, I won't worry about that. This area here, <clears throat> excuse me, let me put a little bit of white just there, and I'll see if I can blow that out. So while we're waiting for the middle all to come back in, don't rush things, you know. You can play around with your edges like this, put a little bit more white in, push the white out. You know, grab a few more bits of lacing there. Same over here. Block colours. See, that looks much nicer than just that block of colours. So this can just go here, a little bit more white, and we'll blow that over. So this is what I was kind of thinking when I was watching um, another video with somebody else's video, and I'm yelling at the TV. I'm going... Blow your edges out! But she didn't. So I thought, I'm going to try that. There's no point in me yelling at the TV, telling people to do stuff, and then I don't do it. So I thought, I'm going to try that and see if it works, because that was just a little idea I had when I was watching her. I thought, yeah, you should blow your edges out, and you won't have those. <coughs> Try not to touch the paint with the end of your blower. All right, how am I going? Um, oh, this is so pretty. This is going to be a little bit muddy just here. I wonder if I can put some more white in there and just blow that. I wonder if I can put it, I'll, I'll, I'll experiment. I'll put a bit in the middle and see if I can actually blow all the way around. Normally, you know, you just blow out, but let's see what happens. I don't particularly like blowing back into the middle, but only because it just sort of disrupts any lacing that you've already got. No, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. This bit here, mm, see that might be a problem now. Probably should have just stuck to what I normally do and blow out because that area there may be a problem. I'm not sure. This is better than it was. 
but it's always your middle that you you watch don't you okay um anywhere else anywhere else let's go a little bit here oops might help if i open that all right so from what i've learned blow away from the center not into the center that's not really doing very much there one of those colors must be a little bit thick because the white didn't want to blow all right i think i'm done so because i've kind of dotted the colors all the way around we've got lots of mix of colors we haven't just got you know rings and then you blow over the top and you just get one color over the top of everything uh, if you just do puddles so that's what i, I wanted um, a bit concerned about this area here it might not be too might be a little bit blurry now i've got double-sided tape underneath so i don't know how easy it's going to be to pick up i know it was all right now the middle isn't really moving i was going to tilt it a little bit but because i've still got a bit of a dip there it's not really moving that's okay let's let's just do this hey i think i've got really good coverage here cross our fingers and toes and let's do this most of the paint tends to stay on the piddle pad underneath actually maybe i need to cut a piddle pad and put it down the edges there because it's kind of missing a little bit it just makes me a little bit more work for me i guess now when you're catching it make sure you just catch underneath whoa all right um i think i might tip a little bit of that off well not tip it off but just take the paint that way a little bit now my middle is getting a bit scrunched up that's okay it will stretch out okay let's go again oh that was a bigger one see the paint's hitting the sides now <laughs> covered now look at that slow it down pop your finger underneath all right I am covered woohoo all right let me have a look at it so that's that white patch in the middle there that was a bit I was a bit concerned about too much paint what do you think it's hard to know some of the lacing's really pretty no it's not gonna move got no chance <laughs> oh dear um, what to do what to do I might go again. I'm just not that happy with it. It's got some really pretty lacing, but there's, see the big blobby bit of aqua there and then that big blobby bit of white? That, that bothers me. I think I've had too much paint. It's really hard to know until you start experimenting. All right, let's go one more time with these colours. And um, I'll try not to put too much white on. Have I got enough? Yep, I've got enough to do one more pour. Bye bye, pretty painting. I'm going to try a little bit less paint, coloured paint this time. I'm going to put quite as much white on because I've already got a base there to use. Float everything around on. And I think I'll cut down a little bit on the, um, the brown. Oh, no. I'll just cut down a bit on the paint, full stop. And we can 
can see what the difference is if I just do a puddle. Would like to do a little bit of colour. Maybe I'll do them like this instead. On the outside. This one's getting, oops, got any more? A little bit. And then I want to just put half on one side so that when I'm blowing the white, I've got turquoise on one side and then the chocolate on the other. Go a little bit less with the white though. Put some going off over there again. Okay, uh, a little bit less with the white this time. There we go. Yeah, I put too much white on last time, it just kind of flowed out. I thought, oh, too late. Here we go. Alrighty, that was a much better blow. Wowzers. I don't have any, you know, of those streaky colours like that. You know when you get too close with the blower and you get that that colour there, that kind of streakiness, when it's all spun out, that's what tends to look muddy. But I've got that little bit of white there on the edges, so while that's all waiting to flow back in, let's blow some of this white out with my little blower. Look at him go, look at him go. Okay, so I don't want to disrupt this lacing here because I can't get in there with the blower. So what I need to do is I need to put a little bit more white there and then I can blow that because I don't want to disrupt the lacing that I've got there. Push it out. Push it out. just there. Even if you don't get any more lacing, you're still blending your colours towards the end and you're kind of spreading them out. So, you know, most of that will get tipped off anyway. These browns, um, and actually the turquoise, they're all opaques. Because generally the rule for this technique is to use semi-transparence. But brown just doesn't come in semi-transparence. Put my blower in it. I always put my blower in the paint. And then I get these icky bits that I don't like because I put my tool into the paint. Let's go again. Okay, that'll do me. Right, I can't 
be greedy. I think that's going to be really pretty. And those bits on the side I can just tip off. Now we're going off to the side again. So let's recenter. See the middle doesn't want to move. I think the middle's going to be really pretty. This on the outside here, not so much. I'll, I'll spin that off and hopefully I can get away with keeping that middle. See how the middle's not moving yet? And I don't know if it will, even if I'll wait a couple of minutes, I don't know that it actually will move. I'm just going to do little movements back and forth and try and get it to loosen up a bit so that everything flows together. Otherwise, oh, there it goes, starting to go. Look at that. Can you see the middle? I don't know if you can see the middle. So just little movements like this until the middle opens up and starts moving with the rest of it all right otherwise your middle can look a bit unfinished so just keep going little movements until it's all moving together and then we're good to go all right here we go Oh my gosh, <laughs> that was a lot of white paint. Please be pretty, please be pretty, please be pretty. I don't have any more brown paint mixed up. So you're gonna have to be a keeper whether you're nice or not. Oh, it's looking good, it's looking good. That was that little messy bit there that um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure how it would work. All right, now, the rainbow corners. I don't know whether there's enough paint left on them. No, I thought maybe that would work like if I blew them. How about if I use my more powerful one? having it blurred like that than having the straight lines what do you guys think that was what I was thinking anyway and I wanted to see if it would work just blurring them a little bit but I'm going to um, spin again because I want some of this to go and hopefully it'll go over there as well okay but yeah that, that worked okay didn't it rather than have those straight lines rainbow lines the little fan blower wasn't strong enough to, to move that paint but obviously the hairdryer was strong enough just to move a little bit and I think it's better to have a little bit of a blurred kind of bl not blurred but a blended edge rather than have those rainbow lines what do you think yep that's what I think anyway Okay, right, well that's looking better. Oh, I stuck my finger in the side. Yes, oh that's much better, you guys! Yay! Yay, yay, yay! One more time, get a little bit more off there and try and get this little corner covered. If it doesn't get covered, that's okay. I can deal with one little corner. I wonder if I can... See, I've got... You know how I put the blob of turquoise there and the blob of brown there? That's why I've got different different colors I guess it would have been nice if I had some of that lighter brown in there but hey look it's it's fine it doesn't have to be matchy matchy I keep saying to everyone it doesn't have to be matchy matchy I think it's really pretty how it is one more time you got to be careful not to over spin you know you should look at it and go okay that's that's fine I can deal with that one tiny little corner rather than over stretching because then your lacing starts over stretching Oh, it's got the corner, it's got the corner. Yay! Oh, look at it, it's pretty, it's pretty. It's pretty, 
it's pretty. Wow. So you can see in the middle, let me wipe my hand so I don't drip into it. You can see in the middle just there, that's where the center was kind of bunched up. But look, I'm probably the only one that's going to notice it, you know, picky pants um, would notice that. Um, now I wonder if I can, no, look, I shouldn't, should I? W wondering if I can just put a little bit of turquoise just on that corner there. My turquoise is pretty much empty. A little bit of turquoise. Now this is just being really, really picky. Let's see if I can just just try and blend. No, see that's made it worse. Oh, I've got no turquoise left. Oops, there we go. Let's just do that. Let's leave it like that. Turquoise corner. Let's leave the turquoise corner like that. I'm not going to touch the top. I'll just touch the corner. Now that's enough paint just to flow down and cover that little corner. That's better, isn't it? I think the turquoise corner is better than having a white corner. Now let me run my little tool underneath. No, it's moving. What do you think, guys? Love these colours. Tiff's going to do this again. Yeah, I just would have liked a little bit more of that, um, the lighter brown through here. Because it's it's up here, but it's not really up there. Oh, it's a little bit. But that's the only thing that I would change next time. But hey, it's, it's all up to the way you layer your colours. Playing with the side. All right, that's it. Stop fiddling, woman. Stop fiddling, woman. Which way does it go? All right. I am done like a dinner. Love, love, love it. Okay, so the first one I had too much paint. And also I had too much cell activator love it Got gorgeous lacing but I did a much better job with the blow um, as I said I keep saying as I said but how else can I say it <laughs> if you blow too strong instead of the white CA just sort of gliding over the top and making lacing you the air is digging in and making the streaks instead and they just blend so use maybe use a smaller little end like that and you know I did this with my hand so that I could gently gently work out where the air was going to go and then pull back a little bit and just gently ever so gently push the white over the top don't dig in like a dip, like a Dutch pour and just blow the bejesus out of it because it's not going to get the, the desired lacing that you want. It's just going to blend it all. So just be really careful. Oh, it's pretty. There's a very annoying light overhead. All right, let's get down for a close-up because it looks much nicer in real life when you go down a bit lower this um 
brownie. It looks more. It looks actually looks a bit more orange here. Um, which one was it? Oops. Burnt sienna. See how it's looking. It's got darker areas there, and then where where it's blended with the white. It's kind of gone more of a, a lighter orange. And look at that turquoise lacing. When I, when I started pouring my very, very early pours, I was watching Anne-Marie Ritterhoff. Hey, Anne-Marie, <laughs> love you to pieces. <laughs> um, these, one of these, I'm not sure if they're exact colors, but Anne-Marie used to do a lot of pours in turquoises and browns. And uh, it's just not a color scheme that I tend to use. I, you know, I love my blues and my greens, but I thought, no, step out of my comfort zone and do something a little bit different. So this half of the pour has got a lot more lacing on it. Over here um, is a little bit more, you know, overstretched where I didn't do so well with the blow, but hey, it's hard. It really is hard. So don't give up, you guys. It's just practice, practice, practice and go gentle with the blow. Don't blow the bejesus out of it. Just go slow, go gently, take your time, wait for the middle to come back, make sure that the middle has loosened up before you start your, your tilting or your spinning, okay? It's really important to get a good piece. Right, <clears throat> I think I'm done with the lecture. <laughs> Hope you don't mind me lecturing you. <laughs> Just trying to help. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I love, love, love it. And uh, I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.